hey guys welcome back to the channel today we got a good one for you um it's one that i guess i didn't really think about doing but a question come through and i thought hey let's have a video and might be able to give some folks some ideas or teach some new folks some new techniques so stay tuned it's going to be a good one <music> Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about how do we fish lakes grass edges. Maybe you have a lake that's full of grass. Lily pads, eelgrass, milfoil, um, hydrilla. And maybe they're all, you know, you got, you're just unlucky. <laughs> it's all, that's all the lake is. Well, I've got a few tips that might help you catch a few more bass. In this video so let's get to them all right guys if we're fishing well first off for the guys that might be new to the sport anytime you got any mats mats being it could be hydrilla where the boats chopped it up uh, it could be snot grass it could be some kind of scum it could be eelgrass it could be a combination of all of it lily pads one of the best best Techniques I could tell you, and I have a video on it, is a hollow body frog. Work them mats. Those fish are going to be under those mats during the summer, and the hollow body frog will bring them out. Another way to do it would be what we call punching. A heavy bullet weight pegged with your beaver style or straight stout. You know, beaver style or a straight tail worm, something that doesn't have a lot of appendages flapping. And he'll go to one ounce, depending on how thick your your uh, mats are. One ounce, three quarter ounce, you know, one and a half ounce, you know, crazy amount. Because you want to punch it through that so that it goes underneath and comes down. And you're going to peg it, and the bullet weight's going to cut through there. And then this, because... And by the way, guys, this is a um, Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver Green Pumpkin. Notice it's pretty streamlined. It's just going to go down through there. And you can bounce it under there. And a lot of times, a good technique is, if you're imagining your Texas rig. Sorry, guys, I had a biting gnat on me. You know, you bring that weight up to your mat and you just bounce it. And it'll make a little clicking noise. And a lot of times that'll create a strike. Okay, guys. So now what do we do for the guys that, you know, already know about how to fish mats and whatnot, but want to fish the outsides of the edges and maybe they're not pretty? Well, I've got a few tips for you. I guess we're going to start off with none other than the swim jig. Okay. The swim jig is excellent. For things like that because of the pointed head it'll separate the grass and it's got that minnow profile now the key here guys and I like to run a Kai tech paddle tail but for demonstration I have the crush city little mares you want to match up your swim jig with the right size paddle tail and the reason for that is, as you're swimming this through, and I do believe they call it the Alabama shake, okay? But when you match up the right paddle tail size minnow to your swim jig, you don't have to do that. This is going to get a body roll, which is what you're mimicking with that shake as you're bringing it through the water. And that paddle tail's swim back there. And it gives bulk to the bait. So you have your skirt. And I'm not going to rig this mayor because he's really not the right bait for this. And it just gives a better profile. Uh, colors I would use, guys, depends on the clarity of the water. I've got a lot of natural colors. Um, you know, you, your clear water, three, four foot visibility and up. Maybe a shad color if you have shad in the lake. A bluegill color if you have 
if they're primarily bluegill. Um, another type of bluegill shad looking color. These are dirty jig finesse swim jigs, guys. But any, I have stray king swim jigs. They all work. Um, I'm going to cast it out along the edge where the lily pads or whatever your mat ends, even if there is grass below it. And I'm going to have my paddle tail and I'm going to reel it right along the edge there. Uh, if, if the grass happens to come up, the nice thing about the swim jig is it's going to separate that grass and you'll be able to come through. Uh, rod that you want to use. I would probably go with a 7.2 to 7.4, me personally, foot rod. Uh, I have the loose jigging rod, um, jig rod. Uh, it's medium heavy action. I'd probably run, being that you're around mats, uh, I would probably run at least 15 to 17 pound fluorocarbon. And a 7 to 1 to 1 gear ratio is what usually the reel I'm running with. Uh, if you got a faster reel, of course you just slow down if you have to. But I wouldn't go no lower than 7 to 1 to 1 gear ratio. Okay guys, moving along. Another technique that could be deadly for running along the edges of the mats is the popper. Now I'm not sure, oh this is a Rapala x wrap popper. Um, key here is if you got real clear water and bright skies you want to go with a ghost color. If it's a little darker you want a more opaque color you know like your bone things like that. Um, the feather does not hurt if you can if you put a feather treble hook on there it just gives it a little bit more action a little bit more flash but you want to bring that down along that mat and it you pop it let it sit pop pop let it sit the reason for this guys and the time that I would use this is if you're ever around mats you might hear this like or a click click that's bait fish up underneath that mat sucking off the insects and the larvae and things down there which are going to attract big bass so your popper mimics that um, again I would probably use my jig rod medium heavy rod but with treble hooks Although it's not necessary, you could go down to a medium action rod if you have one. Because what you want with the treble hooks is a more parabolic bending rod. You want it to load down further in the rod. This will help the treble stay stuck in the fish. Um, if you have a heavier rod, another way to handle that, which would be, is use uh, monofilament. Monofilament has a lot of stretch, so if your rod's a little bit more stiffer, it's going to be a little bit more forgiving. That monofilament will act as the parabolic bend where your rod's lacking. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to run at least monofilament running a popper. Uh, again, depending on the size of the fish in your lake, 15 to 17 pound test. If you got four and five, six pounders, you can run. 10, 12 pound test. Uh, but this also, a disclaimer, depends on how thick your cover is. If you're in real thick cover or close to real thick cover, you're going to want a heavier line to be able to jack them out of there. You might even want a little heavier rod to be able to guide them back to you so you don't get into the mess. Okay, guys. Technic technique number three. Four or five, whatever it is, would be the owner kill weighted swim bait hook. Why I like this for fishing around the edges of grass is because I can Texas rig, say the mayor, for instance, and it becomes virtually almost completely weedless. Now, it's not your swim jig, it's not your Texas rig, which we'll get to, but this is going to let me come across the tops of the, you know, the tops of the grass along the edge of the mats without catching everything and give a presentation like a, you know, a bait fish. Again, this is the 
mayor by Rapala Crush City Mayor, green shag color, and an owner, kill weighted swim bait hook. But just a different profile. Now this one's a dandy. Um, drop shotting. I love to drop shot along the edge of the weeds. Depending on how high the weeds is, if you're from a bank, you might not be able to do this, but if you got a kayak or something, or the weeds are, you know, not terribly high, a drop shot can be deadly. Some of the baits I like, yum dingers, the yum helgramites, these things are deadly, guys. A yum spade tail worm, obviously, the robo worm, and blue, bold bluegill, your ghost shads colors. And Gary Yamamoto Senko, four to five inch. Guys, if I'm rigging the Senkos, I'm gonna rig it wacky style on the on the drop shot, and I'll just work it. Now with the drop shot, like I've said in other videos, you don't want to overwork it. Less is more with a drop shot. Now, how would I decide my leader length? Well, I'm going to figure out about how high the grass is or the algae or whatever I'm trying to be above. And I'm going to make my leader higher than that. This way it's just setting up above there. And I got a presentation just above the weeds. So the fish that may be in the weeds can come up to it. Or the fish that are traveling across, we'll see it. But it is a definite, definite must when I'm fishing grass edges. And you, you can mix it up, guys. You can do fluke style baits. You can Texas rig your drop shot. You know, depending on what you need. You know, um, but again, like I said, just make sure you're above whatever covers below, you know. And from bank guys, it's hard because the angles might be real hard if you got four foot nail foil or something and you're from the bank you might need almost a six foot leader and that'd be almost impossible to cast so that one might not be for us bank you know guys bank fishing but with that being said if you happen to see a little hole in the mat or you know maybe a spot where the the grass ain't as high you bank fishermen are back in with the drop shot um Again, fishing that hole in the mat is where a bass exploded on something. A lot of times, if there's a hole there, it's nice and clear underneath, down to the bottom. Drop shot would work great. Okay, guys. Last but not least, one of my absolute favorite, all-time favorite baits for fishing um, grass. Would have to be, or grass edges, excuse me. Would absolutely have to be the chatterbait or some form of bladed jig. This being the jackhammer, guys, excellent little chatterbait. Starts up as soon as you start to reel it, that blade's going thump, 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 thump. Uh, a lot of flash, good quality components on it, but if I only have one, if I could only have one, you know, whether that be because of the money or just wanted one, didn't want to have a box full of chatterbaits, it would have to be the Mini Max, guys. This is fairly inexpensive. I think they're about eight bucks now. Again, it starts up as soon as it hits the water and you start reeling. I've caught absolute giants on this. Guys, Chatterbait is an excellent, excellent option for when fishing around grass or along edges. If you would get caught in the grass, you're just going to want to snap that rod real fast. And that's going to pop this bait out. And a lot of times that's when you're going to get your reaction strike. Um, how would I, my trailers... I usually run a Kitek right off the back, a little 3.5 inch Kitek on the Mini Maxes. You might go to a 4 inch or something on your jackhammer, something a little bigger because you've got a bigger hook. 
uh, pretty simple guys technique is you're gonna cast it out on the the mat if you have you know you have grass down below on the edges I'm gonna let it get down and I'm just gonna want it to tick the tops of those grass just enough to get it stuck and I'm gonna snap my rod which is gonna cause it to burst out of the grass and a lot of times them bass are just gonna be like oh you know they're just gonna come unwind for it uh, you know, you find the speed, you could do a stop and go retrieve, you could do a burn. I would probably start with a burn where you're just reeling as fast as you can. Um, maybe they want to burn slow, burn stop. But a medium retrieve for me a lot of times is what works, you know, just cranking along, get caught on the grass, snap it out, crank it along a little more. Okay guys, you can use a jig rod for the chatterbait. But it's one of them baits that if you want to get the best action out of it, um, you might want to step up and get yourself a chatterbait rod. What's a chatterbait rod? Well, it's a rod that's going to be more parabolic bending. Again, that word, crankbaits and things like that, you want the same deal. Um, but it's going to load up, and a lot of times they could be moderate action. So that means it's not going to come back to a straight form quite as fast it'll be a little slower this will let the hook and excuse me and when you feel like if you're using a graphite rod with a fast action tip a lot of times you feel that thump. well that's the fish opening up and sucking your bait in and when you set the hook he hasn't really got it in there quite yet so you're either going to miss him or you're going to get him right here in the lip you know and that's a real soft spot for a fish. So a lot of times you end up tearing his lip and he, the first time he gives you a good head shake, that lures off. Whether it be he comes up and does it or he's down below, it's just going to wiggle out the hole and you lost your fish. So you want to get a night. You don't have to. I think I got a, I think it was $150 rod from, it's a Daiwa. Um, it's a chatterbait spinnerbait rod. You don't have to spend that kind of money. Uh, there's other, if you don't have that kind of money, you could use your jig rod and go with a monofilament line, which will help absorb a lot of that. Um, but, or you could go with a fiberglass rod, like an ugly stick. So you're going to lose a lot of sensitivity, guys. But the key here is you want that fish to get it back a little further so you get a better hook set. When you're hook setting a chatterbait, Take from my mistakes. Don't go like this, like you're, you know, frog fishing or, you know, crankbait fishing. You want to reel down to them, and then you just want to lean into them to the side. Just lean in. Keeping the tension and reeling fast. Guys, let the fish fighting you against you push that hook deeper. Because if you go and you just send it to the benches, a lot of times you're going to rip a hole in his mouth and that, you know, you're going to lose him nine out of ten times. But if you reel down to him where you feel the pressure and you just lean into him, it's going to drive that hook in deep and it's not going to rip his lip. And as you're reeling and keeping tension on him, he's pulling, he's just burying that hook deeper. And that'll end up get you know, your, your uh, land ratio will go much higher if you do that. Well, guys... That's just a video um, I wanted to put out there. I think it, uh, you know, think it should help a lot of folks. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you like the video, smash that thumbs up button, guys. And as always, I know I say it in every video, guys. If you have any questions or anything you want to add to a video, or you just want to say hello. Please leave it down in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. It means a tremendous amount to me. All you guys do. So we'll see you on the next one.